Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Chaluminati Podcast, episode 66. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by my two buddies, Alex Fasciani and Jesse Cox. Hi, boys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I don't know, that was weird. All right, anyway. I tried to copy Alex, and I figured I would, but his came like out like, with hey, you. so I had to go even more like, hey, you know. People who well, know me describe me as like a modern day Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura type. No. You know? so, mm, what? Mm, I, yeah, that's I how, don't even go that way. It doesn't matter. So, you two aren't important you know, today anyway. So before we move forward, whoa, uh, we yeah? also have a very special guest today everybody <gasps> we are joined by none other than <laughs> the woman <laughs> just shouting from the background who is it, it? <laughs> Tell it's me. our friend Dodger. Hey. Hi, Dodger. Hey. hey. Hello, bud. Welcome to this shit show of a podcast. No, time out, time out. Whoa, Thank whoa, whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 You're telling me out of all the first guests we could have. Wait, this isn't our, this isn't our first guest. First Never the, mind. No, this is what I was going to say. How dare you forget Airdorf? Yeah, I just realized Airdorf. <laughs> Never mind. Out of all the second guests we could have. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I the only the second person who's ever guested on this? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna. And it's been like a year and a half. Up. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say you guys have done so Chilomani. many episodes. Oh, they, yeah. you don't. They, the The world of the stupid is infinite, Dodger. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's, there's infinite topics. Yes, you're only the second guest. Welcome. Thank you for for jumping on the podcast. Wild. I'm super pumped that uh, that you wanted to to jump on, uh, specifically with the topic that you brought us. That I'm not going to spoil. Yeah. Um. um it's exciting. I've been uh, catching up on some of the more recent Chaluminati episodes, and I'm I sorry. now know way more about aliens than I ever thought I would know in my <laughs> <Yes>. life. <laughs> Yes. Um, have heard so <laughs> many weird ghost stories. I now know that Jesse is super into goblins. Like I've just I've I've opened <laughs> lots of doors in the brief time. And every time you open a door, there's like 900 more doors. It's beyond true. there. Um, I'm like the monsters Inc. of people. You know what I'm saying? Doing yeah. this specific topic uh revealed that to me because i was like i'm gonna do this thing and then realized yeah. i needed to focus it or it was going to go <laughs> on forever so <laughs> how's that jfk episode going by the way alex i don't want to <laughs> talk about it <laughs> <laughs> wait so i do cocaine now <laughs> <laughs> what what was <laughs> first off <laughs> i believe that uh <laughs> secondly it was convincing yeah, it was very convincing. It was um, incredibly. So wait, what have you brought us? I am out of the loop on this. What did um, you bring us today? That What got you to leave your husband and child for a few <laughs> hours to come be weird with us on the internet? Well, I'm going to, I've, I've put together like a short little story to sort of get us all into it. Um, so I can read that for you guys. But what is, I, I mean, what I'm asking is. What is your background in the world of uh, the paranatural? <laughs> yeah, well, you bring, did you bring your credentials? Yeah, why are I have you no on card. this show? <laughs> I have no card. Well, it was more like I had I had listened to sporadic Chaluminati episodes, and then um, I was interacting with Mathis on the internet, as you do, and I was I like, live. I feel like this sort of zone of topics hasn't really been touched on and Mathis was like yeah we haven't really done that um and that was it <laughs> and that's it there and you go it. that was all that's the prep that we put into the song what, yeah. what, right what I'm getting from this is that Mathis said do you want to do that and you were like okay <laughs> so Mathis got out of doing work and he <laughs> yeah, put it on you <laughs> and then you get to do it all all right yeah all right checks out this is what the listeners pay us yeah to that's do. what it checks out yeah, yeah yeah um shall I hop in shall we do it yeah, I, I, the only other thing we're missing is Alex's shilling. I mean, if, oh, if, if Alex wants to shill, shill we got want a sick, want me to shill. Here's what I want you to shill. shill. I want you to shill our sick new T-shirt. Guys, have you ever read a comic book? Do you know what those are? <laughs> From back in the day, they call them comic books, where they have it's like it started off as like funny cartoon stories, but they don't move and they stay on the paper. The funny, they, the funny they pages. Don't move. Uh, but now. The Candies. comic books have the funny, the, the, they go from the funnies to the scaries. And now the scary comics have the good arts. And we made it look like a scary comic on the shirt. And the shirt ha has got the Mothman. 
And if you look at the shirt, it looks like the scary type of comic book. And uh, this is so much man, more information than I expected. <laughs> yeah, me too. Man. And, you can, this is and, you can, and you can buy I can it see now it with my third eye. You can buy it now at the yeti.com slash chaluminati pod slash collection slash chaluminati. Yeah, okay, that's the one. There you go. Forget about the one that I said and do the mathis. Yeah, go check it out. We got schlort pins up there as well. So go grab yourself a t shirt and some schlort pins, and you're good to go. That's probably the worst. That's probably the grossest piece of merch I've ever been associated with. <laughs> Definitely for me. The Absolutely. Pin? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, pretty nasty. It's cute. And it and it passes. It's not like NSFW. No. Unless you explain it to somebody. Right. Which is the fun part. Right. Yeah. It's about buttholes. It is. Obviously. Or the lack thereof. You're, about, you're yes, right. You're the right. removal of you're the butthole. Right. Very specifically. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's it. Dodger, you're Great. welcome to take it from all here. Right. Yeah. Now There's turn. no segue from there. I feel there. like I, I can follow that. Yeah. I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's, let's go back in time a little bit. Oh, are you like an old lady for this? Or is yes, this like I'm an old lady now. I don't think I can commit to that, though. So I'm going to discard <laughs> it. That's fine. I don't want, you know. It'd be weird um, if you just showed up and then we're like, I'm an old lady. <laughs> <And> now a <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start us uh, like 12th century Scandinavia, specifically where we know as Sweden now. The Christian influence has begun and a sometimes silent religious war is fought between neighbors. Two men argue in a field. One has recently returned from a former pagan site, now defiled but what, by what we might think of as missionaries for the Lord. The other man has been hard at work in his homestead for days, delighted by his crop this year. His family will be well taken care of. Understandable. They've done everything right since the farm was first settled by his ancestor. They've followed all the rules. The first man, who we'll call Sven because I'm really creative with Swedish names, is shouting loudly, almost making a show of his aggression. I have a line that I would like Jesse to read in his best Swedish accent. <laughs> yes, are you, are you sending that to me? In Zoom. Uh, yep. Ahem. I saw of it and greet it. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. <laughs> your ties to the devil have known. <laughs> This he has is a why your crop face, is, but his hands are human. <laughs> this is why your crop has done so well. My mind suffers. Beautiful. Mwah. My apologies. You just gave me so much more work. I need to <laughs> edit in can subtitles. Can they put subtitles on a podcast? Yeah, is that possible? Can. For the audio listeners, I can't do that. But for the YouTube listeners, I can. What do you mean? This is not English. <laughs> <laughs> a dirt road is close enough a passerby might hear and Sven is bad at hiding his intent to garner some interest a second man who will call Bjorn is taken aback Sven he and Bjorn are the two Bjorn. names Bjorn. he doesn't have any it's lines only, I'm so sorry it's the only two names that there are in this <laughs> country the only ones. he doesn't believe in the Christian God he doesn't believe in the devil but he actually does know to what Sven is referring for that night Sven saw something on Bjorn's farm. A three foot tall man with a long pointed head shuffling about in the stable. A creature well known to the Swedes even today that lives in gardens all over the world. Because you see, to Bjorn, our confused farmer, Sven might as well have been speaking of a family member, for to his family, that is what it was. A tomte or a nissa, the spirit of the first farmer to claim and work the land. Bjorn's long dead ancestor and the nighttime protector of his home. Time up out. until recently. Whoa, 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 whoa. diving in. He's done. He's whoa, already the flag. Like issue of Sandman. This is crazy. <laughs> you should have expected this if you listen to the alien episodes. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Is this a fable or is this a? Are you about to tell us a real story? Will you let me finish? Uh, maybe it depends. Welcome on to your Chilum, not a podcast, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> You've officially had your first moment. <laughs> <laughs> Will you let me finish the story? Fine. Okay. Okay. And then it's a free for all. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm ripping apart. <laughs> okay. 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 Up until recently, the traditions surrounding these creatures were accepted by everybody. Don't abuse your animals or your family. Don't speak or behave rudely on your farm. And don't modernize because all Tomta are grumpy old men deep down and change is annoying. 
So as long as you follow those rules as best you can, your little relative will help you care for the animals and crops while you sleep. Honestly, we should feel a bit sorry for Sven. His turn to Christianity has surely caused his crops to do so badly. It's not Bjorn's fault. The tomped at the rival farm probably ruined the crops and sowed the seeds of madness in the family in retaliation, as we know Tomta are wont to do when they're scorned. Despite the vitriol being thrown at Bjorn, perhaps the Christian... How do we know this? How do we know that? Would you let me finish? (laughs) You're adding flourishes that I can't confirm! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Despite the vitriol being thrown at Bjorn, perhaps the Christian influence in Scandinavia is missing something important happening on their own soil. As St. Birgitta's voice reaches the ears of many in the 14th century, warning against the ancestor worship of Tomta gods, something has already taken root, traveling to England and Scotland on the ships of the Vikings in the 8th century and finding new homes to live in. Not long after, their influence would spread the world over... And perhaps you even have a Tomta idol on your street or in your yard. So let's talk about gnomes, guys. Yes. Do you want to talk about gnomes? I'm so excited. I love. So when you reached out to me, like, I want to talk about gnomes and stuff, and I'm like, there's a lot of subcategories of gnomes of like where you can go with this. Yes. So I'm excited to talk about Tomta. So I I specifically wanted to talk about um. The the if we can figure out chronologically, because from what I've read, there's so little info that ties together all of the different places that have this exact same imagery. Right. Like so Mm -hmm. many places have this squat little man with the pointed red hat that watches over a house or a garden. Like so many places are like we did this first. But when I looked at everything chronologically, um, the tie ins don't actually interfere with each other too much or at all. So I'm like, maybe we can figure out where it started and why we now are so chill with gnomes in everybody's gardens. Well, I'm not chill with gnomes in my gardens. I hate those things. <laughs> my dad, <laughs> I'm actually like so 10 much. of them. <laughs> I'm actually more scared of human sized statues that people have in their yards. There's well, this, there was a house up the street that had a Santa by the door that like comes up like early December and it like, I was afraid to drive past the house at night because it like, <laughs> always scared me. <laughs> it's just looming Wait, in the darkness. So my so, question for you, yes, really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me. You. So the story you told is one yes. where I thought there was like some pyramid head killer walking around the farm. Uh, that was the but, intention in how I wrote I mean, it. You got me. But, you got me. Um, to answer your question from earlier, being like, "Wait, was this an actual thing that this guy saw?" Um, essentially, like. Tomta, like we think of gnomes now as being like itty bitty or like borrowers or like yeah, that yeah, kind of we'll a thing, cutie pies. Right? Yeah. Like a smaller dwarf even. Yeah. So a lot of these early versions of this lore, they were like three foot. So if a farmer nearby saw the silhouette of like a kid at your house, he could be like, dude has a Tomta. Dude worships the devil. Dude doing weird rituals <laughs> that- over there. Fuck that That's guy. That's unfortunate. So, yeah. that is, so they only come out at night to do yes. the work of the farm. So they watch over the farm. They are protected. It's like if if you lived in a house and you knew that your great, great, great grandfather bought that house originally and he just loved it so much that he just didn't leave. <laughs> he haunted it, from he haunted it forever. Yeah. Like an aggro, <laughs> scary version of the Keebler elves that that <laughs> farm. Yeah. So, they will go so, they, so like de- terrible dogs. seeds in another's garden. They're like watchdogs to protect the farm overnight. Yeah. Yeah, akin to, it sounds. So mm-hmm. is this is this a story of like don't come on I'm trying to figure out what the like what the point is in the world <laughs> of farm well cuz right cuz why people why people would think of this? Yeah, yeah the origin I wonder of, like, if it's the sort message. of a, you know it's night on a farm. To me, when I think farm at night, I think that's the scariest shit in the world. I don't well, want to exactly. be out in the middle wouldn't of nowhere. You want, wouldn't you want like a creature that is tied to you familially that to be like you? on your side protecting yeah, of you course. while you sleep? Yeah, and I, I wonder if that's, I wonder if it has to do with that, if it's like a, a thing you tell children 
to make them feel good about being like, no one's around and it's nighttime and it's scary out there. Or Don't if worry, it's something the you, out there. Yeah. Or if it's or something you tell other people Tomta out there, he'll just <laughs> stab you in the butt with his hat. <laughs> <laughs> like, or is it something you tell others to be like, "Don't come to my farm at night," because my that would have to that would mean that the adults truly believe. I it, have then. a strong little old man who lives outside of my farm at night. <laughs> yeah, but it's, well, that's what I'm saying. It would have to, you'd have to have a lot of buy in from the adults. Like, I can see yeah. it being told to kids as sort of like sure. one of the numerous cautionary tales that we always tell children to shut them up so we don't have to actually explain stuff. But I wonder if it's something adults believe, because in the story, as an example, mm. the one guy was like, oh, the devil, the devil is in me. And so yeah. I don't know. I mean, they they definitely treated it as real when trying to accuse other people when Christianity started to take root in a burn the witch sort of way. Right. Sure. Like it was, it was definitely brought up as like, they have a Tomta, it's a demon sent by Satan, right? <laughs> that kind of a, kind of a vibe. It's um, like proof that they're cursed. Yeah. Or that they've, oh, that they've done some kind of a ritual intending to bring a demon to their farm. So they're like damned, right? Well, why does, why, where is the transition between it is a helpful relative and that is a <laughs> so, demon? Okay, so um, yeah, a lot of a lot of the stuff that you find when you look it up, it's either Sweden or Germany. Um, from what I can tell, uh, actually, the first time that we see this gnome imagery, um, just to like go in order, right, is yeah. uh, first century ancient Rome. What? So there's a Damn. yeah, so there's a minor Greek god named Priapus, who was like a, he was a farm god. So it's, he's like a car, tracks. but he like runs on electricity. Ex- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He was all about fruit and gardens and livestock and um, more specifically, super into penises. Hell yes. So I, I actually have a picture for you guys. I don't know if I can send pictures in zoom, but <clears throat> I have no idea. Actually, um, essentially like all of the common physical depictions were straight up just gnomes. They were gnome statues with like giant dicks or with a hidden dick inside of the statue. Um, <laughs> that is but, so wild. Yeah, but they Rome loved penises. <laughs> you know, they were really all about it. <laughs> they lots really of were. people had little tiny pee pee statues, though. Like lots of different cultures had like their little like big dick statue. That's so weird. Totally. But did they have like, did they have little bronze dick statues that straight up just looked like a bronze version of a gnome that you have in your yard though? <laughs> because that's when it, that's when it's weird, right? It's like straight up just like, it's, it's basically just the same ass imagery this whole time. Yeah. Wait, let that, me. That is yeah, so we, fucking, that is like, get a picture. That's like some like time travel sh- stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Um, I'm having trouble finding it. But uh, if you just Google gnome Rome, <laughs> gnome Rome, um, gnome Rome. It's just like a well, modern actually, picture Rome, gnome. of a garden gnome in Rome. Garden gnome. Um, Priapus. Oh yeah, Pri- wow! This he has really weirdly long legs. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. And Satellite he's, he's radio. Hidden. Okay, this is <laughs> the only weirdly long thing this. he has. Yeah, no. It's this what this the? thing. So these were around um in people's yards. Yes. <laughs> oh my what? god, it's like a Matroshka doll, but like inside <laughs> his body is a dick. It's a dick. Yeah. Yeah, his upper half was a dick, and then you like hit it with the gnome part. <laughs> you hit it? Like a little bell? Yeah. No, hit <laughs> like, like you oh. was hit and you put the other part on top. <laughs> you just, yeah, yes, we Alex, we you have, we the have dick. a talk about about this gnome this gnome is <laughs> yes. 90 percent legs <laughs> yes it's like a human body cut in half with a penis on top and then just like a gnome that's dressed like in like swaddled like baby yoda style and he slots on it like uh like a pencil topper yeah it's so weird it's really good it's, it's very only 249 whatever that it's, is it's a bronze Euros. it's a giant yeah. bronze Euros. penis that's a you know that's a steal yeah 
for 300 euro could be yours. We should get one of these in our merch shop. This is awesome. My favorite part is that instead <laughs> Can of being gray, instead of reviews on this website, instead of reviews, it's listed as evaluations. <laughs> <laughs> That's did it, incredible. Did it succeed at what you needed it for? I see zero evaluations on this thing. I don't think a lot of people <laughs> are out there buying tragic. Uh, a that is God tragic. Of fertility erotic bronze figure in two parts. I don't think that's a thing people are out there getting. <laughs> the shame. In um, two and, parts. and you're saying there's like parallel versions of this? No. So I'm saying that this is the first time that we can see like this type of like thing, this type of imagery, yeah. right? Um, and there has been Roman equipment, like ancient Roman equipment found in the Scandinavian area. Okay. okay. So it could have, it could have this been. idea could have potentially been brought to them. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, in Sweden um, and uh, Finland has like, from what I can tell, they have like kind of an adjacent idea. They believe in Haltia and they're, they could be spirits of, or protectors of anything. So like Mathis could have a Haltia, but uh, also Mathis's house could have a Haltia and Mathis's city could have a Haltia and the river nearby could have a, right? So there's like lots of them. Kind of vibes, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. so specifically a house one, I believe would be called a, a Koti Haltia. Also, shout out to everybody who's actually from these countries that's gonna roast the shit out of me. Love you. <laughs> um, it's It's fine. But yeah, generally they're they're referred to as Tomta or Nissa. Nissa is Old Norse, and Tomta is more like the Swedish version of that. Um, I say Tomta is the only one I'm familiar with name wise. I have yeah. heard that before, but the others I have not. <clears throat> so um, if if we believe that ancient Rome somehow brought this idea to uh, the Scandinavian area, and then when the Vikings peaced out in the eighth century and came to like the Anglo Scottish zone. Um, then they also brought, you know, this much stronger now lore of like Tomta. And it would have clashed. It, yeah. Wow. Um, what? A, it, so it's just like a meme. It's just straight up. It's, it's like, they just all, it's like, look at this little <laughs> dick goblin guy and we love him and I want him in front of my house. So what is he? He's ours. I made this. <laughs> well, I like how it went from dick goblin to family, family spirit. However, well, they are, they can be malevolent. They're not like always good. Um, yeah, I get that. They're like kind of scared. Like the vibe is that they're a little dangerous, right? It's just like any other sort of fey creature, right? It's yeah. it's like, yeah, they're good as long as you follow their rules or as long as you're entertaining or et cetera, et cetera. Um, Think of uh, Jeff the Mongoose. We did way back when he was like, you know, one of those kind of creatures that was just you couldn't really I'm understand. A him boy, the- but I can be nice if I want to. Yeah, you couldn't really <laughs> understand his motives and what he existed for. Um, yeah. With Tomta. <laughs> With Tomta, it, it was literally like, don't be rude on the farm. Um, don't abuse your animals. Don't abuse your family. Don't modernize. Uh, which don't is, modernize it, is very specific. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're old. And they don't like for things to change. They want to know that everything's going to be as close to how it was when they were around. Right. This is the plot mm. of The Witcher now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so if you happened to like really tick them off um yeah like mentioned in the story they it was rumored they could either do something as simple as um you know mess with your crops and and you know cause a bunch of mischief and then leave or uh they could basically drive your entire family insane (laughs) <laughs> so, a it was a wide bur- yeah, it's, it's high you know, stakes all of a sudden <laughs> very high stakes so uh they did a lot to try and keep the dump to happy um <laughs> oh my god yeah so uh we're like the gnome in the gnomes garden is what it is <laughs> wow way to bring it an extra level deep alex they're I, the boss you know what i'm saying they're the boss yeah well, exactly. It, it's, it, I just don't, it, like, if they're, if they are family spirits, it's like, why are you so twisted? If you're just there to drive well, your own because f- they are, family they insane. They are like a, a afterlife bastardized version of living, right? 
So there's always mm. like something skewed there. There's always something kind of like otherworldly and grotesque about it, at least at that time. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So Vikings come over to England ish around like the eighth century. Um, and we know that that like back in Sweden around 1300s. So time jump. But around the 1300s is when Christianity actually started to finally like take root there. So in Sweden, in Sweden. Yeah. So people like Bjorn in our fake story, um, you know, they're doing everything right. That and was a fake story. It was a fake story. Wow. That Got was me. just a writers. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> False. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's, he's like leaving the porridge out for the Tomta. Another big thing. Tomta love porridge. He's leaving the porridge out for the Tomta. He's like making sure he's doing everything good. And meanwhile, Wait, okay. Hmm. What, what else the Tomta like? Do you know? Uh, I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to leave some porridge out for some oh, are Tomta. You? So stop this. Viewers, do, not do, this, feed into this. do this with me. Don't listen. Let's all put some porridge out for the don't Tomta. Don't do this. If no. you have some porridge, no. make some instant porridge. I don't know. Maybe some cream of wheat. That's the main thing. We to call the aliens with their psychic powers. It did it not didn't work. work. Well, but maybe the Tomta will work. <laughs> it depends. Um, I'm going to let you hear the descriptions of how wacky it got in England and Scotland and the, the like English Scottish mm. versions of this. Um, <laughs> and then you can decide which one you would want to appeal to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, yeah. So England and Scotland, they, they start having these like weird skewed out like versions of this that they call cuff goddess or old gods in old English. And um, of these, only a couple of them are still popularized and like known about um, brownies or brunies oh, yeah, in Scotland brownies. and okay. hob in England. They're basically sure. the same. It's the same sort of an idea as a Tomta. They're about the same size. But um, just to like really mess with you, they can be invisible if they want. They can <laughs> transform into animals if they want. Um, they are perpetually covered in hair, even in their human forms. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah. And they're about three foot. So like that idea has, has maintained. They're about three feet tall. Um, they want milk. So while the Tomta wants porridge, they just want a saucer of milk. And okay. in, in a uh, good Dobby fashion from Harry Potter, they will get offended and leave your home if you give them clothes. Oh, so okay. If they, oh, that's got to be where she pulled it from. <laughs> yeah, uh, if if they get annoyed with you, if you do something to make them mad, the way to like banish them from your house, they actually have a way to get rid of them, right? As opposed to like early version, like you can just leave them clothing, and then and then they'll Man. leave. It took them a few centuries to figure out the exploit. You know, but they it took it a out. while. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, well, they, they turned on cheats first. They were like, yeah, well, I'm invisible now. And, uh, you know, well, I have like all these do? powers. So whatever. <laughs> have some clothes, loser. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to see you. Get out does of here. Does it make them homeless like it does in the in the stories? Does it does it make them destitute? Because I'd like to think it does. Well, um, I'm trying to remember. I think like. Uh, they just go next door. Well, yeah. So in. In Scandinavian versions of this, they are bound to the home. And so for them to leave is a huge deal, right? Uh, yep. Once uh, once it started to take off in, in England, Scotland, Ireland, all of that, um, typically they can leave. They can come and go as they please. They aren't bound there necessarily. Um, but that sort of slips into the Bogart aspect of it. So both brownies brunies and hob can become bogarts or bugbears bogeymen like all of that um okay. because in their lore they aren't bound to the home they will straight up follow the family wherever they go so if they become a malevolent <sighs> spirit exhausted they will just follow you forever um unless you can figure out a way to reason with them or get rid of them but if you make the mistake of referring to them by a name and giving them a name, they will never leave you. And you will have a Bogart in your family forever. <laughs> Just like no, that sucks. such a strange that is the easiest slip up it. in the world. Are yeah. there any benefits? Like 
<laughs> benefits to a bar do anything art. good yeah <laughs> no bar arts are literally just like this thing used to be nice and help out around your house and maybe get mischievous sometimes and then you did something wrong and made them so angry they they turned into like a terrifying horrifying creature so Whoa. yeah that kind of sounds almost skinwalkery it's like fan fiction <laughs> of like n- like the original Roman God that's like been changed by like three different know, cultures man. now. And now they're the just like giving Roman him powers. Gods. It's like all the different <laughs> color kryptonites for Superman and stuff. <laughs> it, like it, it's just, they're just expanding the legend. They Dude, also, imagine if you saw that original Roman God, just human pair of legs with this, like a short torso, the silhouette of the thing walking in your farm in the middle of the night. <laughs> and it just kind of pops its top off and just kind of pisses in your garden. Cause oh, it's just mad no, at you. I don't like <laughs> it. pops its top back on and just like rolls it. out. It's a chicken boob. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, You know, we've got that we've got that whole thing going on, which is pretty close to Tomta, but they also started to have sort of a weird religious skew to them. Um, If uh, you know the term lubber fiends or lubberkin, uh, that's that's what Hellboy is believed to be. Just as a side note, Um, they're okay. Yeah, they're considered to be like monstrous children of witches and demons. Yeah, there's Um, one in The Witcher, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and some versions of them, for the most part, they act just like Tomta and they just they serve humans and they do chores and whatever. But they're like a bit more <laughs> like on the monster side of things. But some versions of them literally just hang out in abbeys and try to mess with monks. So they <laughs> basically represent like gluttony, like they're little gluttony demons. And they just hang out and are like, you should drink more wine, man. You should eat some more. Like all this. <laughs> I do not eat one of those guys around, from every don't that. do drugs commercial ever. <laughs> and then this is the best one. The red caps. Uh, I believe that they showed up around the 1300s. Um, they are just straight up awful, malevolent creatures. Um, and sometimes like Tomta, Nissa, Gnome, all of that is translated to goblin. Uh, it's normally in cases where they're just straight up evil. So red caps are considered goblins. And they're also in like English folklore. Yes. This is also England. He will live in an abandoned or a ruined place and wait until somebody needs shelter and then he'll kill them and soak his cap in their blood. Which is oh why he gets the name Red Cap. So all those gnomes with the big red caps, they're like, we've killed and we will kill again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, he's once again like a short human, but he's got really sharp teeth, long, sharp nails. Um, just looks generally terrifying. But you can but, drive well, them away with the Holy Scripture, obviously. What? Why does he soak his hat? Is there a reason? Is he just is just that's just what he does? A fashion that's, thing in his world. It's you know like how serial killers always have a trophy. Uh, yeah, you know yeah, it's plastic that. with Dexter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I I feel like it's self explanatory. Oh, all right. Like if I if I saw him and he like he was like I was like what's that guy do? And he like <laughs> he's like see this? I dip this in the blood of the last guy that I let come in here and chill out. I would be like. Okay. Holy shit. <laughs> he just pulls out a blunt. Gotta Wanna go. come hang? I don't I would not hang out with a red cap. I'm not I'm not a fool. <laughs> uh, so the transition, why did they go from being uh like helpful farmer spirits to suddenly all of them seem kind of problematic? Was it it's, because of Christianity or like, I, what was from the From what I can tell it's because of the Christian influence. So yeah, they were always like it was always you had the potential to make them upset, um, but overall they were there to be helpful and th- they didn't want to kill anybody. But because um, Christians generally looked at them as like a demonic figure or as ancestor worship, if you believed that they were like a past relative and stuff like that, they took on more of a of a demon context. It's just auto bad just because it's not. Like, yeah. 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 Doctrine. Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got people like um, Sampurgita 
who was in Sweden, I believe. And she's literally telling people like, you need to be careful because Tomtas are are driving you from the Lord, right? Like specifically talking about Tomtas. So I think there was probably a lot of, uh, I, I don't know, bad press for them a lot for of gnomes <laughs> yeah, a lot of gnomes just, in yards that were pissing off the church yeah 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 and they they just didn't like it anymore huh. uh and you know a, a general distaste for idolatry in general so once yeah. they became like figures it was that was also like a step too far we haven't gotten there yet but <laughs> uh, <laughs> i know it just goes on no, oh, I mean, I got to ask in your research, I know we're going to go further, but in your research, did you find yourself in a hole of seeing like gnomes caught on camera videos? <laughs> um, I did look up some gnomes caught on camera videos. And <laughs> can I be honest? Every single one of them, I was like, I didn't, I didn't see anything. What are they Have talking you seen about? The time Have, you seen the Dobby one? Have you seen the Dobby one though? <laughs> the, the, the one with one? like the, the little gremlin that like runs by the kids. That one. It's like, no. it's like it's like this dude in the yard. He's like, <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna <laughs> find that. I'm gonna link it to <laughs> yes, all of you. Please watch do. It right some now. great goblin ones. But most of the time, like like Dodger said, it's like a pixel in the darkness that might be moving. You're not entirely sure, but people are screaming and they're freaking out. Yeah, it's like that video where the uncle shows up as Shrek and all the kids hate it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just like that, except a pixel. Yeah, this is the do- <laughs> yeah. this is the Dobby video for you if you've never seen the this, Dobby. Video. I want to. I would okay, love wonderful. to hear your like I'm watching it right organic now. reaction to this. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. I'm excited to see. Oh, it looks like it's only 30 seconds. Great. Yeah. It's less than that, really. Oh yes, I've seen this. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, <laughs> "What is that?" <laughs> That's right. I, I have love seen it. this. Wait, I have seen this. This is so weird. <laughs> That's the red cap, right? That's him. <laughs> he's, That's he's, a, he's just missing his hat. Like he's he's like he got a chicken caught. dance halfway through. Like he's yeah. like, oh. He looks like he's hightailing out of there. He's like, oh, so, oh. So what's the, can I just ask, what's the, um, what's the pitch for why this isn't a, a kid? Uh, it looks creepy. <laughs> There's no pitch. Yeah. Look, There's just, no pitch I, for I why this okay. isn't a kid. I think it's just look at it. Like, yeah. <laughs> sure. The yeah. way it walks, it just, I mean, looks like just, just someone who just figured out that they can balance weird. That's I don't just understand. what I'm now. Like now that I've seen this video, like that is what I think of when I think of like, if there was like a gnome that was like a, like a sort of like slightly scarier when they do like the real fairy tale version where like the little mermaid dies or whatever, like this is the gnome version. Right. I will find, I, mean, I know we gotta, we gotta push on, so, but there's also a great video of like a little, some dude in the woods who was like, catches what, is a gnome and he's like that it's is, a peaceful that species. That is a very famous video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. No. Anyway, th- continue. Sorry. Oh no, it's totally fine. Um, yeah. So all that stuff that we just talked about is like 1400s to late 1700s. Um, is as that stuff is starting to to take root in the minds of people. Seems to be crystallizing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're starting to get some traction, right? We're in the 1700s now. <laughs> Can I just, so like, before, before you start. <laughs> yes, what? I found a video from the show Inside Edition where they say they've debunked <laughs> the Dobby story. And they say oh, it's a good. little boy with underwear on his head. And I just want to let you know, that's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's a little boy with underwear on his head. You can see here. And I'm like, nope, I can't do this right now. <laughs> I love it. Did he dip the underwear in the blood of a dead traveler, though? <laughs> I mean, it's anything's possible these days. All right. Sorry, I'm watching the video again. Okay. No, it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's just, just something, the new lens of like child <laughs> with is underwear a, on It head. is a child with underwear. Got it. It absolutely is. Mm, yes, I love it. <laughs> All right. So information, traveling quicker, cultures, sharing more. The 15th and 16th century, there's this weird dude named Paracelsus in Switzerland who's like popularizing the idea of elementals, um, of which he believes gnomes are the elemental and protector of the earth. So the concept of gnomes is, is now like Switzerland, France, Germany, we've we definitely see them a lot and and Germany tends to be like gnomes are ours. We made those. 
<laughs> um, so this guy's like looking at the board and he's like, yeah, all this shit is just like sort of like every country's version of this one elemental creature. That's like the spirit of the earth. So he was, uh, he was, he was a fascinating weirdo. Um, he believed in what's called like hermeticism, which is that the, the body relies on harmony of human and nature so it's like if somebody if somebody says, oh, if you find a plant and it looks like your liver, it means that it's good for your liver. Like that kind of stuff. If you've ever heard okay. people talk yeah, about I mean, that. I don't know. Sounds like um, it works in like a Minecraft game, but not in real life. <laughs> so <laughs> he he insisted that one of the things that we needed to rely on and know more about were the elementals that governed nature. And that would help us like keep ourselves healthy. Oh. Um, yeah. So the gnomes governed the earth. Um, salamanders were fire. Undyne were water and sylphs were air. Oh, he played secret of mana. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you put out like a saucer of milk to get in balance with the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I love the connection. It works so well. <laughs> Maybe I'm honestly not sure what his pitch was aside from like, you know, there are elementals out there and maybe they can, maybe they can help you. It like sounds like how it is now. Kind of right. Like that's kind of like just exactly the root of like exactly what I think of from like D and D as a gnome. Yeah. So if earth likes milk, what are the other three? Like, I well, water likes water. Fire hates water. Yeah. Wait, with (laughs) the, um, Oh, what is like the, the, uh, oh shoot. What are those called? The humors. What are the, what are the, the liquids associated with the humors? Oh Hold my on. God. I need, I need to the look this sanguine, up. sanguine, um, shit. I have my vampire book. I can't believe this <laughs> is. Hold on, let me use my vampire book. It's in here, book. right? It's in here. Yellow it's in here. bile, four- blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. There we go. Hype. So, there you go. Um, Awful. None of those are porridge or milk. Yeah, no, Ooh, no, no. <laughs> but, mm. No, I don't. I don't <laughs> know if they, they would want to eat them. If he goes through my body, porridge and milk eventually becomes yellow bile. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Same. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Um, <laughs> that one. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> body facts for Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Germany, um, around like the Renaissance. It seems like they were looking at what came to be known as grotesques, which are like humanoid, full, full on statues. So like full size, human size statues um, that rich people put in their yards. Everybody was super into like into like strange stuff around that time. Just right? looking like at it the, and tripping out. Just yeah, being just like, like the, whoa, you what know, the fuck? The, the disgust of humanity <laughs> and stuff like that. So they made like purposefully ugly stuff and put them in their yards and everybody was like oh yes i love it so <laughs> honestly very into it very right into it. so um that's when we started to first get garden gnomes it was germany so okay for germany they started to make them lots of people started to to design them and put them in yards they started to take off in germany it hit mass production in like the 1800s so they're not necessarily wrong, I guess, if they're just like, well, we, we own yeah. gnomes in that they were the first totally. commercial creators. And also like it's it's believed that they gave them the name gnome based off of gotcha. the figure because the the figures themselves were called gnomen figurin, um, which oh. means miniature figure. So from there, so they're just like mini they boys. were gnomes. Yeah, mini, exactly. Minis. Gentlemen, I, don't know. I wish we could probably call them like yard goblins, <laughs> right? I mean, you can call them yard goblins, but you've already it's established that you hate them. So that's true. <laughs> little beardies, uh, <laughs> little, little little beardies. beardies. They were like kind of an idolic representation of the belief that a gnome would protect your house. It's again the exact same idea. You're so kind of like it's like a crucifix. You're like just repping your totally. shit. Yeah, okay. totally. So you would buy a gnome. You would aim it at your livestock or at your crops. And it was believed that like that was the physical representation of this creature or this idea of like a protective spirit. Right. And obviously now they're just they're just garden gnomes. But at the time um, they had like purpose 
And then honestly, like it, it seems like there's this dude named Sir Charles Isham and he was from England and he came to Germany and was like, oh my God, these gnomes are tight and just bought a (laughs) ton of them, like 30 or 40 of them and brought them back to his house and put them everywhere in his garden. Just for fun? Because he was like, these are sick. (laughs) Yeah. And he had like, he had enough influence that all of these high society people kept coming over and again, were like, oh, I love them. They're ghastly. (laughs) Right. So (laughs) this is is hideous. I must have seven. So then everybody else started to buy them. And it was at that point that it seems like they became more of like, I just think they're neat, right? Like they had no purpose. They were just, they were just fun. That, <laughs> right? I think that's my favorite fact of this so far is that <laughs> one man was just like, I love this. And it just <laughs> sparked an outrage <laughs> where he came from. But what that it's means some- to me is that even from the beginning, the whole idea of gnomes, which like in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's like some type of old lady thing. It must've been like, fashionable at some point it was but the reason that it was fashionable from the beginning was like look at all these weird little men everywhere <laughs> yeah, it was always a weird thing i love that that is that makes them so much better i want one now oh, so still don't one of the earliest ones that was owned by this dude and in his yard is oh, named God. lampy he was made in 1847 <laughs> he still exists Oh, you can like oh my God, you can go see a- him at Lamport Hall in Loddington, England. I intend to do so just because I oh, have to now. Um, <laughs> yeah, now you now you have no the choice. Re- the reason there's only one left <laughs> is that his daughters fucking hated them. <laughs> and under, I'm with the daughters under on cover that one. of night grabbed all of the ones they could find. Lampy just happened to be hidden, grabbed all the ones they could find and disposed of them. And now Lampy is worth 2 million pounds. Wow. Because it's wow. the oldest garden gnome ever now. So that it's really just a small little man. Like the, you see like the, the formations of what would eventually become horrible looking garden gnomes in this guy. Right. They're like the <laughs> remnants of the very first time that like somebody's girlfriend was like, I don't care. There's too many figures of Batman in this house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and overnight when you're gone, you're working late in your security shift yeah. over at the, the local mall. She just fucking bet yeah. trash bags, all and of it, them. And it reverberated through time and space. And now we all have these shitty little old men penis dolls <laughs> in memoriam of the first weird thing that we collected around our houses. <laughs> Can I ask like a crazy question? Absolutely. Looking at Lampy yeah. <laughs> on my screen right now. <laughs> yes. And then you said this was 1840 something? 1847. Can I make yeah. a wild assert like wild assertion about what I think? For sure. Led, That's what this entire thing has been for me is me just being like, I'm speculating that this is yeah. the this is the chronological order of this shit. So yeah, absolutely. Go for it. So I don't know if this is where you're taking us, but I have a feeling this is where we're going because it is so effing American. It's just the most American <laughs> thing. All right. So we have it's 1840 something. We have this gnome. I imagine you said it was from Germany originally. And so Germany like, was big, the first ones to make the the popularized. So like, there's like a popularized. I imagine they are like stone or clay, right? Something um, like that. Remember. It can't it be, says yeah. on it. Terracotta. Yeah. They're so, just clay. So they so at the time they're making these, it's Germany. My assumption is that we have two world wars and the production of these ceases. Yes. Yep. That's very and true. Because America is America, sometime <laughs> in the 1950s or 60s, someone was like, you know what, super kitsch? Garden gnomes! <laughs> and they started making those plastic monstrosities we know today, and that's why we think of gnomes the way we think of gnomes. I Can, can I assume I'm correct in that? Because it sounds exactly yeah. like what's going to happen. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, <laughs> so, war, yeah, lots of war, and they yeah. just stopped making like these these good high quality ones um, for a while, and they obviously make them again now, and you can get nice ones now. Um, but the original like company that tried to mass produce them was not able to continue to do so. I would, Im- I, I would imagine that. You know, Germany took some hard hits for 40 some years. So the original tchotchke. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I can I can see it as clear as day, just like everything that America had in the late 40s, early 50s 
was just like, it's a fun, cute thing we saw overseas. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, he went from he went from being the god of uh like gardens and life and dicks to like the god of like useless crap that you buy and leave in your house. <laughs> yes. Your yes. other family members <laughs> resent you for. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so it's sad. actually a great it's poignant. Like, this is a such a, a great story though of like just how this crazy cryptid stuff ties into like actual history and why actual history is just so fascinating. Mm. One fucking dude was just like, "Love it." And that was it. Right. And, and again, yeah, like if if we're to say that ancient Rome brought this over to Scandinavia, it could have easily brought it other areas that mm-hmm. that the Romans went. Right. So, you know, but timing wise, it totally works out if that is what happened. If the idea started there in the first century and then went to Scandinavia, went to what is now the United Kingdom, spread throughout Europe and eventually like all over the world. And it's not that it's not that everywhere else in the world doesn't have stories of like a homestead guardian spirits. They do. Yeah. But if we follow specifically like this imagery and this sort of a thing, this is the the path that you can kind of naturally find for it. Specifically the tubby little belly button man. Specifically the featureless the, the shirt and pants. Pointed hat. hat. Yeah. And, and like now, um, kind of to that point of, you know, now it's for us, it's, it's a, you know, did it ever really have meaning for us? Not really. Right. Like we're Not so really, no. No. But, Grandma's creepy statue is what it meant to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same. Um, but it's but it's like it's fun and it's kitschy. You know, they're they don't have an air of of malice or like concern or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. Right. They're, they belong in like imagery of like Tim Burton, like like uh, what's the movie? Edward Scissorhands vibes. Right. You know? Yes. One hundred percent. In our culture, like they fit in like a weird like suburbia vibe for me. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But yep. but if you're to go back to Sweden, the Tomta is now has has also had like a transformation there and it's stuck around. But it's now the Yul Tomta, which is where we get the idea of Santa's elves from. So oh. now the Yul Tomta um, doesn't the like lads. Yeah, the Yule lad. Yeah. The Yule Little comes to, you know, comes by on Christmas, hopes that there's going to be some porridge there. To answer your question from earlier, Mathis, they would like a small bowl of porridge with a small cut of butter on top. Ooh, all right. Um, That's clean. Simple. That's how I take my porridge. Elegant. Yeah, so you leave that for them at night. It's kind of the cookies and milk of Santa, right? But for them, you leave them porridge, and then they come by, and they they drop off presents, um, and, and that's their job now like that's the that's the tomta job now but if you scream at them they will slit your throat <laughs> and if you scream and at them their hats in your blood yeah they'll ruin your life and <laughs> destroy your Christmas. crops yeah i keep wondering <laughs> if it goes back more than the first century like as a roman thing because you imagine the roman empire extended so wide that there's a chance because you keep hearing you know if you like delve into uh you know ancient Chinese mythology. There's always mm. like a little short fat guy who's causing trouble. Uh, right. There's, there, I'm, I'm totally. curious if there's, you know, if it's like, you can go back even further. I'm sure it just Absolutely. requires a lot of research, but like, it's fascinating. Or maybe like, follow me here. What if there was an alien from another planet who was small <laughs> and he was a troublemaker and he made an, a, a very big impression on a very many people yeah, hung out totally. for centuries. Dude. And his, his name, name was good. E. Yeah. Not, e- <laughs> not E.T. <laughs> no, <laughs> not E.T. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. So that's well, like, I know that this was very Eurocentric. Um, yeah. I wanted I wanted to work in stuff from other areas. But if, look, listeners, if you enjoyed <laughs> this and you want me to come back and talk about m- more weird, like, fantasy folklore stuff, um, there are some crazy, like, fairies from Africa <laughs> and Japan and all kinds of places that I was itching to stick in here and it just didn't fit. So um, well, I'm sure I would, we would love I to, would have love you to hear those, those stories of those crazy <laughs> small human shaped creatures that are nice, but kind of scary. <laughs> or maybe they're just always nice. That's true. They could be, you I know, you know I'm, maybe I've not all met, of uh, them yeah. are, yeah. are the like, I'm nice until you cross me. 
And then I that's hate true. you. That's true. The haunted dolls. That's true. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to obey the law of the jungle. That's it. Sh- what sure. do you think Sherlock gnomes fits into this? <laughs> I mean, every society, right? Once, once it evolves to a certain level of civilization, there's going to be some sort of law enforcement, right? Right, right, right. You know, I just figured, where do those <laughs> movies all fit in? Nomeo and Juliet. <laughs> Wait, how do you think that works in this? I want. Okay, we have to end this now. You have to, this is, you're, 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 have you, listen, do we're you losing not people, know dude. Of the no, there's a series of gnome based movies, <laughs> and they all take place in the same gnome world, but they're all different. There's Nomeo and Juliet. There's Sherlock gnomes. Oh my god! I hate it. What it was is. the show that was like? What th- wasn't there a show that was like Stephen the Gnome or something? And yeah. he had a wife. Yeah, Stephen the Gnome was cartoon, great. Right? I, I don't know if it was it called Stephen the Gnome. Is that right? Am I wrong about the that name? That sounds right. That sounds Stephen. right. To me. Hang on. And then well, he just this... dies at the end. He like rides off like what? in like Frodo and Gandalf in, at the end oh, of Lord yeah. of the Rings. The, David the Gnome. David. Oh, David yeah. the Gnome. The world of David the Gnome. This is 1985. Like that. Three seasons and he dies at the end. I'm pretty sure he you're correct. He rode a dog like a horse and at the end yep. he's like Swamp Thing. Like he goes off into the light. Fo- like he just becomes one with, with <laughs> yeah, light. He like fades yeah. away. Yeah. He's said the world has moved on from him. Oh, this is this is like ever so slightly adjacent, but since I worked a couple of other pop culture things in there, um, any of you who are really into Moomin, I've been reading the Moomin books, like the original Moomin books to my daughter, and they are dark and sad. And um, they, the Moomins were originally pitched as uh, stove spirits. So like creatures that lived behind your stove. And awesome. in the lore of Moomins, they were driven out because of the modernization of stoves. Oh my God. Huh? So there's that. That's bizarre. I always yeah. just thought they were like hippos <laughs> or something. <laughs> what? I just thought, I yeah. thought they were like really nice hippos. I don't know. They're, they're weird little house spirits. And in the books, they're like desperately trying to find a new home in a world where, uh, there are now modern stoves. There are no wood stoves left. It's like a so Miyazaki to live. movie. Oh my it god, is. this is a screenshot of Sherlock Gnome. There's a gnome I just in like wanna, a I just want you to see the screen. The screenshot of Sherlock Gnomes has so much in it. <laughs> Wait, I, I need hate to this. see this There's movie so now. much in this image. <laughs> there's a, a gnome, there's a gnome in a Borat now. bikini. Like, <laughs> yeah. Banana yeah. sling. That was the first thong. thing I saw. I, I can't figure out why there's different types. There's little tiny gnomes, and there's big gnomes, and there's blue hat gnomes, and red. So the woman in the red hat is a killer gnome? A lot going on in this image. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now that we know where the red hat gnomes come from, some of the mystery and is solved. And why does Gnome Watson have a bowler hat? Because he's because a, he's it's a, his thing. Is that Watson. Sher- Sherlock correct? Sherlock is, is he, also wearing his thing. But are they you know? outcasts because they have special hats? They're not blood dippers for sure, but like They're that. Not we don't know blood what, dippers. We don't know what That's type of gnome know. they are. Also, why do they have flower pots that are gnome size? A lot of questions about this movie. <laughs> too, a lot of questions. Too many for us to answer yeah, in just one episode, Jesse. But I want to let you know, <laughs> this is this is one of the many gnome movies that exist that have been out in the last five years. Y'all are missing out. In the gnome movies. Yeah, the gnome see you, dude. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Dodger, for bringing us that amazing topic. Of course. We appreciate it greatly. And, and again, if everybody wants to hear more, uh, you're welcome to come back. And, right, and before, we so leave, many- before we leave, were gnomes real? Oh, yes. like, do I believe gnomes are real? I'm asking all of you. Were gnomes real? Oh. Just because I know pygmies are real, I think that gnomes could be real. I think they could be at least based off. Like, I think somebody maybe saw something that they explained to themselves as a gnome. I think there may be, be there is some fact at the center of the gnome legend. I don't know, man. After you see those YouTube videos, you just can't go back. I mean, Dodger said like a kid alone could be a gnome. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think that somebody wasn't lying when they said they saw a gnome. That's that's my thing, too. That's where I'm at as well. Is like I believe that people saw what they believe to be a gnome for sure. Or a Nissa or a yep. Tomto or a Bruni or a Hob or. All those fun, delightful words. Oh, also, I should say before, like a bunch of Irish people are like, what about silkies? There's are, what? What are they? There's so much conflicting information, guys. <laughs> are they seal people? Are they ladies? Are they just Lady Tomta? Are they like it's it's all over the place. I ignore I was them. Like, Wait, what? Seal people? Isn't there like a horse version in a horse element too? It's a silkies. Uh, so. Some things say that they are seals that can turn into women. They are yeah. half seal, half woman, 
or they are just fairies or they are literally Lady Tompta. I was like, I really want to work this in huh. because it's the only one that isn't like it's an ugly old man. <laughs> who, who walks around your house while you sleep, right? I was like, it's his the only is one. literally his penis. <laughs> it's the only one that's like some feminine energy. Yeah. But, but it, it, the info was never consistent. So I just kind of like left it by the wayside because it that wasn't really mentioned that much. But it is believed that silkies can also, whatever they are, that they can also become um, Bogarts. So. Huh. Oh, they can, they can, uh, and they call it Bogarts. They even say they can turn into Bogarts. Yeah. Oh, just like, weird. just like Hobbs and Brownies, they can uh, become Hobbs, some- Hobbits, coincidence. Oh my well, God. <laughs> wow. You cracked it open, Holy Alex. Shit. Nice job. I got to go to bed. <laughs> That's why you come on this show, <laughs> my, you know, for the real secrets. Brain shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you're going to handle it. Uh, Hell yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Dodger, for coming on and bringing us information on these wonderful little hobbit creatures, gnome creatures, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. There's so many different ones. So if you want to come back on, you're more than welcome to bring uh bring more wild info with you uh we will be back next week but we're gonna go record a mini so oh my god uh where so if you you know if you got if you want more of us if you're sitting here and, and like, you're like i'm not satiated i need more of this i like these guys i want to watch it go to the patreon and sign up in the tier with the bonus sodes where you get the extra <laughs> episodes of the talking about the weird stuff of the talking about the check it out. Okay, cool. That was great. That was a great sell, Alex. Yeah, I appreciate to, it. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm trying to, you know, I have a lot of different. I'm trying to appeal to everybody. You know what I mean? You're doing. You're honestly doing a phenomenal An ad job. For everyone I, is what I always say. The that's longer what we the keep better. you around for. Yeah, that's what we have here for. Dodger, where can people find you on the internet? What you, have you got? Anything big coming up going on right now? Oh gosh, I'm just I'm Dex bonus on everything. Uh, life is pretty pretty samey, but I stream almost every day, and uh, I've got a cute kid and i talk about D a lot and you know you have a cute kid just fun vibes so if you want to hang out then come hang out um but if you want more good weird shit just listen to these guys because they've got an amazing podcast and i've been mainlining it while i do dishes and it's, it's wonderful. just I'm, your sanity must be slipping so fast it is big time because you know <laughs> out out my window is just darkness so fuck knows <laughs> are you an alex <laughs> amathis or jesse Am I am I an Alex or Mathis or a Jesse? I would say I'm more of an Alex. I appreciate that. I'm like, that would have been like, my guess. I'm like willing to believe, but I'm also I, I'm also cynical. So yeah, that's the that's the, the smart way to live. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex, what about you? Where would you where can people find you? Find me on the web. You can find me on the internet where I talk with my friends. My name is Alex Fasciani. Find me out there. <laughs> Check out Star Wars New Canon Book Club with Jesse on there yeah. and Davis on there. And we talk about the Star Wars on the line as Jess as a Davis slowly slips into the alt right uh, world. <laughs> it's not the real alt right. It's just like the Star Wars alt right. But he's he's on his way. Which there. is <laughs> way more way more sad. It's like a word. Yeah, it's like it's sadder. Yeah, it's definitely sadder to look at <laughs> from the outside. Jesse, what about you? Uh, hi, it's me. Internet's Jesse Cox here to ruin all your fun. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I got nothing else for you. I mean, <laughs> thanks guys. I mean, it's weird. Great. It's Appreciate weird that we're advertising it. to people who are already listening to our podcast. But like, hey man, right. you don't know. You there know, are a lot of people whatever. out there who say they've never heard of us outside of the podcast. Like, you so stream your it's show. Your time. Yeah. Oh, put it um, you know, uh, just keep watching, keep dreaming, keep being yourself, and remember, only you can prevent forest fires. That's true. Excellent. See you next week, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.